Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we're gonna take a deep dive into the new procedural vegetation editor plugin and the mega plant assets in Unreal Engine 5.7. First, to get everything working, we need to enable the procedural vegetation editor plugin. Before restarting the engine, go to the project settings and enable Manite Foliage. Then restart Unreal. Next, right click in the content browser. Go to Foliage and Procedural Vegetation. Here you can choose one of the two default presets or create a new one from scratch. Let's create a new tree so I can show you the workflow step by step. The first node we need is the preset loader. Now assign one of the two presets. There are a couple of more free presets from Quixel on fab.com. Just add them to your project and they'll appear automatically. This preset has four variations. Right click and create a mesh builder node. By connecting the variation pins you can see the different variations of the tree. The viewport always shows the state of the currently selected node. So if you select the preset loader, you'll see the point cloud that defines the overall tree shape. If you select the mesh builder, you'll see the generated mesh. In the viewport settings, you can toggle a mannequin on or off and also blend in a scale visualization to get a sense of the tree's size. To customize the tree, we have a bunch of modifier nodes. Let's begin with a carve node. All nodes inside the vegetation editor are color-coded. The yellow ones are point cloud modifiers and must be placed before the mesh builder node. As you can see, when we select the carve node we only see the point cloud. So to modify settings while keeping the final mesh visible, we can lock the viewport to any node by selecting it and pressing Ctrl and L. As carve basis, you have several options to cut the shape of the tree. Like length from root, from bottom, from Z position or from radius. Just play around with those settings. They are very self-explanatory. And of course you can stack multiple modifiers of the same type to combine different effects. Next is the gravity node. In gravity mode the trees bend towards the direction you set. In phototropic mode, the branches grow upwards, toward an imaginary sunlight source. The next modifier node is the slope node. If you need trees growing on a mountainside, this is where you set the angle and the band strength. Just play around with the settings. It's really fun to see how the shape reacts. Next we have the scale node. This one is super simple. One slider to scale the whole tree up and down. That's it. And the last yellow modifier is Remove Branches. Here you can, surprise, remove branches based on different properties like length, radius, age and so on. Now in the Mesh Builder node we can change some major things. In the Materials section, you can set or replace the materials for the trunk and branches, including the scale and offset. In the Mesh Settings section, you can reduce the amount of points and segments of the mesh itself. Useful if you want to create low poly trees. The Plant Profile section is also very powerful. If you switch the profile from none to zero, you can adjust the overall thickness of the trunk. And with a curve you can easily define which parts of the trunk should be thicker or thinner. And you can also apply the profile to the branches as well. The last section is Displacement Settings. Here you can apply a displacement texture to the tree to give it a more natural, detailed look. Ok, but the Mesh Builder is not the end of the chain. Right after it we can add a Bone Reduction node. To see what's going on hit Ctrl L again to lock the viewport to this node. 
it's super simple. Just one slider and it does exactly what it says. It reduces the amount of bones. This directly affects two things. Wind animation and overall performance. Fewer bones means less detailed wind movement but also less stress on the engine. And if you imagine having a couple of hundred or even thousands of trees in your level, this can make a huge difference. The next note in the row is the foliage palette. Here we can assign different foliage assets to our tree. In this preset we have three slots. But I'll come back to this note in a moment. First let's add a foliage distributor node. The ethylene threshold controls how full your plant looks. Set it high for a lush, bushy tree or lower to make the tree look sparse, bare or dry. It's like simulating a plant's response to aging, seasons and pruning. The foliage distributor initially uses the preset's default distribution settings. Anything else stays grayed out until you check override distribution. Once enabled, you get several parameters to customize the foliage distribution. Like spacing, scale, angle and more. Just have fun experimenting with all these settings and see how your tree transforms. Before we add the final note, let's go back to the foliage palette. Here you can assign any static or skeletal mesh to the foliage slots you want. It doesn't have to be a branch or leaf. You can even use something completely different, like this apple. Just make sure the pivot point is exactly at the connection point and check the orientation, upside down like these branches here. Now let's add the output note. Choose the folder where you want to save your tree. Give it a name and decide whether to export a static or skeletal mesh. Check Create Nanite Foliage. And for the preservation method, I recommend the new Voxelize system, like shown in the Witcher 4 demo. Finally, set Collision if you need it, choose your wind settings and hit Export. If you now drag your tree into the viewport, you'll notice there's no movement. That's because the new wind system only works on instances. But if you want to use your tree outside of a PCG system, here's a workaround. Create a new blueprint class actor. Add an instanced skinned mesh component. In the details panel assign your skeletal tree. Then choose the Wind Transform Provider. Search for Instance and hit the plus button. Compile and save. Now if you drag the blueprint into the viewport, your tree will finally move with the wind. To control the wind, go to your Engines folder and search for BP underscore Global Foliage Actor and drag it to your level. This is your wind controller. Here you can tweak the intensity and direction of the wind and also set the seasonal state and the health of the trees. And that's it for today. In part 2 we'll take all of this and build a complete PCG forest like the one you've seen at the beginning of this video. So you can populate entire landscapes with procedural generated trees. Stay tuned for part 2. Cheers!